Thanks for joining us again on Walking Through the Word. Today we're going to be reading John chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. So if you have your Bibles, open them with me as we walk through the Word together. Verse 6 says this, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, Jesus is talking about specifically here his disciples. God gave him his disciples, but also God gave him all those that would believe in his name. Because God gave to Jesus, God gave to the Son, all those that would believe in him. They were the fathers, and the Father gave them to Jesus, and they have kept the word of God. And just like every believer today, you have been given by the Father to the Son, and you are keepers of the word of God. You have been entrusted with the mysteries of Christ. Verse 7. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. And you, believer, also know that everything that has been given to the Son is from the Father. Verse 8. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know the truth, that I came from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. Again, this is the talking about the disciples, but also about us today. Because he's going to say this. Next phrase, which is extremely important in verse 9. He says, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Now, this is extremely important because Jesus just, um, just stated that he does not pray for the world. He prays specifically for those that the Father has given to him. He mediates, he intercedes for his sheep. Yes, every single person in the world receives common grace. The sun shines down upon them. They breathe breath. They experience the joy of friends and family. Their stomachs are full with food. They experience the rain. But still, the Father loves intimately his own and the Son prays and intercedes for His own, and not for everybody in the world. Verse 10, All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. That is an amazing statement. Everything that the Father has given to Jesus glorifies God. And everything that Jesus has given back to the Father glorifies God. Meaning that when the Father gives us to the Son, and the Son then gives us back to the Father, we glorify them. They are glorified in us because we continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. It's an amazing, amazing gift that God has given us. And we should never put it to waste. We are to always, always glorify our God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. We should always be in the business of glorifying them in everything that we do. Verse 11, and I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that, may, that they may be one even as we are one. And what a tremendous prayer given to us by our King, by our Lord and Savior. He is no longer in the world with us. Although He is present with us in the power of the Spirit, He is no not physically here in His glorified body. So therefore He prays that the Father would keep us because He has given us to the Son. And his prayer is that we would be united even as they are united. That we would be one even as they are one. And we as Christians should always be united. Having one mind, being in one spirit, having one Father who is Lord of all. Verse 12. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them. And not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction that the scripture might be fulfilled. So those of us 
believers who think that Judas used to be saved but then lost his salvation. It's not that he lost his salvation, but that he was never the sons to begin with. He was the son of destruction, and he was chosen specifically to betray the son so that the son the son's crucifixion might be solidified in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. This is the work of the devil in Judas. That Jesus chose Judas specifically for this purpose. But the rest of them, they were not lost. Verse 13. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So this is extremely important for us believers to, to hear and to absorb and to meditate on. We are in this world, we love Jesus, and because we love Jesus, we shine brightly in the middle of this dark world. But because we do, the world hates us for it. Don't ever think that because you're a lover of God and you're a lover of Jesus that somehow the world has respect for you or that the secular world somehow regards you as someone important. No. If anything, they hate you for it. They hate you because you are not of the world and they are. And I want us to pay attention that even though we're in the world and we are hated, Jesus prays that we are not taken out of the world. The job of the believer is not to separate himself entirely from the things of the world or else we would be useless in this world. But rather the idea is that we would be so filled with the power of the Spirit that as we move and breathe and preach in this world, that we, would, that we would infect the world with the message of the gospel and that we would transform hearts and minds around us. And Jesus' prayer, I echo an amen. Father, please do not take us out of this world. There is still much work to be done. But yes, keep us from the evil one. Keep us from temptation. Let us not fall into sin. Let us not fall into temptation. That should always be our prayer. That we not be taken out of the world, but that we would face temptation and not fall into it. Verse 17. This is how we keep ourselves from temptation. What it says here in verse 17. Sanctify them in the truth. So the way that we battle temptation, the way that we battle our sin, the way that we continue to crucify the old man and continue to walk in the newness of life is through the sanctification of the truth of God. What is the truth of God? It goes on to say, your word is truth. The Bible, the very scriptures that we hold in our hands, that is the truth of God. And if we want to learn to battle our sin and to sanctify ourselves in the truth of God, then we need to study the scriptures. We need to increase in the knowledge of Christ. And we need to continually meditate on the things of the word of God. If we do not sanctify ourselves in the truth of God, then we will be an easy target for the enemy. Verse 18. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for, they, and for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. Jesus has commissioned us to go back into the nations and to declare the good news of Jesus Christ. We are to be as innocent as doves, but as wise as serpents, because He's sending us out into the midst of wolves. 
And the world hates us. Yes, he is talking about his disciples here. But I want you to pay attention to the next verse, which will be part of our next study as well. Verse 20. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So everything that Jesus just prayed is a reality to us as well. Because of what verse 20 says. It's not just applied to the disciples or to the 12 apostles. It's applied to every disciple that came after the 12 apostles. For those of us who continue in the foundational doctrines of the 12 apostles given to us through the word of God, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, through the truth of God, we are to continue the work in the world. And yes, brothers and sisters, the world hates us. And it will be hard. It will not be easy. But the riches of the glory, of the beauty and the majesty of the kingdom of God are infinitely more precious than any hatred, any loss that we might experience here on this earth. So my prayer is that you would be moved by the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news to your friends, to your family, even if they reject you, even if they spit in your face, even if they deny you. Continue to preach faithfully the word of God. Sanctify yourself in the truth of God. Cry out for the Spirit that you may learn to be conformed to the image of Christ every single day. Thank you for listening. May the Lord richly bless you and keep you always in his loving embrace until next time on Walking Through the Word.